Hello and welcome back to Advanced Animation Application, the show where we look at animation stuff inside Unreal Engine. Today we're going to be looking at the pose snapshot or the snapshot pose or the, I forget what it's called, but we're going to look at it. Jumping straight in, what is pose snapshot? Basically a snapshotted pose is something that you can put in a animation blueprint. Uh, it looks like this. So if we right click, we go pose snapshot. We give it a name. Let's call this test snap. So we could use this pose anywhere in our anim graph, you know, however we see fit. So the way that we actually capture a pose snapshot, we can either do it through the character BP or some of our gameplay logic or just through the animation blueprint, but then you'd have to like tell the animation blueprint when to do it. It's kind of a bit redundant. So if we just get our mesh and we get our anim instance, so this is an animation blueprint, and then we're just gonna go pose, snapshot, save pose snapshot. And so, you know, you just type your, your name of the snapshot in there. And whenever you fire this off, it will capture the current posing of the character. So, you know, if my character was like mid jump or something, it would capture that pose. And that's the pose that would then get used in that node that we added in the, um, in the anim BP. So what can this actually be useful for? Well, I've got two examples today, just two of, of many. The first time I used the pose snapshot uh, function was actually with ragdoll get up animations. So you can see here the character falls down and then they can just get up smoothly. Um, and you're probably thinking like, whoa, how the frick does that work? Like, how does it look so seamless? And you know, if the character falls over backwards, then they'll get up like that. Looks pretty good. So basically the animation logic that's going on here, if we just chuck this in slow motion, um, the character is physically simulating right now. And then when it is deemed time to get back up, um, it will take a snapshot. So it'll take the snapshot right now. Then it's actually going to blend from that snapshot into this animation here, like the get up animation. And so at that point where it, you know, takes the snapshot, that's when it stops simulating physics. But we're actually capturing the pose that the ragdoll was in and then using that as a kinematic animation rather than a simulated animation. In the in our ragdoll update function and stuff, um, we know if the ragdoll is face up or face down. And so that's how we know which, um, which montage to play. If you don't know what a montage is, there's a video on it. I'll put it up in the corner. And so then when it comes time to exit ragdoll, when this is deemed doable, um, we save the pose snapshot as ragdoll end pose. We snapshot that into the anim instance of our, of our mesh. And then based on if the ragdoll is face up or face down, we play one of these animations, one of the get up animations, which I've taken from the ALS um, session. So I'm just using a select with that ragdoll is face up boolean. We play the montage uh, and we also immediately set the physics blend weight to zero and we set all bodies below to not simulate. Uh, that's quite important. I also notify my anim BP that ragdolling has stopped. So it's just a boolean that starts when ragdolling starts. So it says to the anim BP, hey, we're ragdolling now. Ticked. Yep. And then over here, it just says, yeah, we're not ragdolling anymore. And that's kind of important to tell you an MVP um, if or if it is or isn't ragdolling. So that's basically the gist of it in the logic side of things. Then if we go and look at our animation blueprint, there is some logic at the very end here. So this is where the ragdolling stuff happens. This is the ragdoll state and this is the get up animation. So like the, you know, get up from being on their back or on their stomach. I decided to put these in their own animation slot, which I also talk about in the, the montage video, um, just so that none of the other like procedural animation stuff 
you know, interferes with it. So we're running around, we're not ragdolling, and then we get knocked over or we, you know, we press the force ragdoll button and we go into this ragdoll is true state. So inside this state is a little state machine. Uh, when we enter, we're in our ragdoll preservation poses, which is something that I covered in the physical animation tutorial, which is linked up in the top corner, like all the way up in the top corner, where we have these kind of um, preservation poses where, you know, they can put their hands out in front of them or behind them based on the rotation of the, the pelvis while they're in that kind of physical simulation state. But when ragdolling boolean is set to not true, so when not true is true, <laughs> um, it instantly changes over to this ending ragdoll pose. So you can see that the duration is zero in the blend. And this ragdoll ending pose is that pose snapshot. And so then when that ragdoll boolean gets set to false, when the ragdoll has ended, it will take one second to blend from the final pose of the ragdoll back into the get up animation thing. So if I'd set this to zero, then the blend would look kind of dumb. So if we just zoom in, we do that. You can see that it snaps to that, um, the first frame of that get up animation, which looks a bit, I mean, I don't have to say it. It looks dodgy as fuck. Uh, if we did this, you know, something like 0.2, then you'll be able to actually see the blend from that, that, um, ending ragdoll pose to the current uh, animation. Still looks a little bit too jerky. So I set it to be like an entire second um, with a cubic interpolation. And that is how we blend from a ragdoll physics state into a nice smooth animation uh, that's kinematic. So I hope that that made some sense. I don't really like going too deep into like specific scenarios and whatnot. You know, we're not uh, giving people bread, we're teaching people how to bake their own bread. So the next example that I wanna look at is one that I actually discovered yesterday when I was just doodling around. And that is actually using the, the pose snapshot to do a kind of um, like a hit stop effect or just like kind of a way that we can make weapons look like they're really like digging into characters uh, using kinematic animation. So not not simulated. Um, so we can make it look like this is like colliding with the, the foot of this character or the chest in that case. Or, you know, you saw it hit the foot there and it looked pretty, pretty brutal. Like it was really chopping into them. Uh, you could also use this method to do something like a... Um, Something that's a bit more like stylized, something that's like anime as fuck, or kind of like Super Smash Brothers, where it's got like really like obvious hit stop effect. So you can see now, you know, this kind of stops and then passes through the the character, and it just kind of makes it look a lot more brutal. You know, whenever we hit something, it will stop the sword in place for a tenth of a second and then continue to pass through. You could do this with the entire character. Um, I've just chosen to do it with only the arm. So if we look at how this is set up, I've just got it set up as a very basic prototype at the moment. Uh, but if we go to my attack trace components, um, whenever we hit someone, we get our anim instance of our own character, we save a pose snapshot as weapon bonk. Bonking is what I like to call like hitting something and it bouncing off. You know, if you've ever played Super Mario 64, you'll know what I mean. And then also I send a message to the anim BP to just say, hey, this variable, you know, active weapon bonk is set to true. And then we set it to false immediately after. And then inside the anim BP, we have a blend poses by bool, which I have a video covering. And we have a layered blend per bone, which I also cover in another video. And so basically we have the original pose 
And then we have the pose saved snapshot, which is going into the blend poses. And this is splitting at the clavicle, so the right shoulder. Uh, and everything else is just using the original pose. So what's going on in this little system is that the character is attacking, they're doing their animation. And then as soon as the hit occurs, we save a, a pose snapshot. And then we're freezing the arm in place while the rest of the body continues the animation. And then we kind of release that pose after, you know, depending on what we had it, um, what we have this blend out time set to. So if we wanted to just like stop the weapon in place completely, we could set this to one second. Uh, if we wanted to just do that miniature little hit stop effect, we would do, you know, 0.1. That's how that works. It is a very nice tiny little touch that really adds a lot of, uh, a lot of impact to your, you know, melee combat. So to reiterate this entire video, a pose snapshot is a snapshot of a pose that you can capture through Blueprint and then retrieve that frozen pose in the anim graph. And you can do, you know, whatever you want with it. And in the cases that we described in this video, we use it to capture the pose of a physically simulated ragdoll and then blend from that pose back into another animation. And the other thing we use it for is for hit stop effects where we can stop the weapon, making it feel like it's kind of lodged in another character. And so it's just capturing the pose of the entire character when the hit occurs, and then only using that pose on the arm, like from the shoulder downwards, while the rest of the body does its thing. And then it kind of releases um, after a specified amount of time. So I hope that you learned something new by watching this video. If you did, please like, please subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure that you check out the links in the description to our community Discord server where you can get help on anything Unreal Engine related. The Twitch, twitch.tv slash Prismatica dev where you can watch me work live on Prismatica the game and ask any questions about Unreal Engine and all that good stuff. And lastly but not leastly, the Patreon where you can support me for as little as $1 per month. And that all really helps me stay fed and alive. Um, so I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.